There are many reasons why the United States is an economic juggernaut. Our technology, skilled workforce, and productivity make us the envy of the world. But there is one major contributor behind the scenes that we oftentimes forget. Our ability to move goods easily and economically through our transportation infrastructure. One of the most cost-effective methods of transport, our nation's inland waterways, is in danger of becoming obsolete. All the result of decades of delayed improvements to our crumbling locks and dams. Industry leaders have been well aware for years, but nothing has changed. One such facility is the LaGrange Lock and Dam, located on the Illinois River, which connects Chicago and Lake Michigan to the Mississippi River. It was built in 1936 and designed to last 50 years. That was 80 years ago. Every day, about 70,000 tons of goods worth $27 million travel through here. Grain, petroleum, manufactured goods, chemicals, coal, and more, representing billions of dollars to the U.S. economy each year. Lots of tonnage goes through this lock, and it's war over the years. It's war the lock walls concaved. No one is more aware of the situation than Bill Cross, who has been the lockmaster at LaGrange for 27 years. Each and every day, he and his crew have to work hard hours just to keep the vital lock and dam functional. I mean, it's, it's age, just age. It was designed the last 50 years. It's, it's 80 years old, and it's never stopped being used. The lock chamber's bad shape. All the machinery in the lock is very bad shape. You can't get parts for any of it. Some of the parts we're running off now we've made. Uh, a lot of the parts that we're using are robbed from Peoria Lock when they've done a rehab. We get calls where myself and the assistant lock master and the mechanic are on call 24 seven. But the issue is more than just all the effort to keep the lock working. The lock poses a danger to every barge that moves through it. We've got big chunks missing in the lock wall holes and jagged edges, which is dangerous to the industry, you know. We, we gotta be real careful with getting the boats in and out of this lock that they don't hook into that jagged steel. And it's not just Bill Cross's opinion. A team of several structural engineers visited and inspected every lock and dam in the country and gave it a grade. And this was the only place, I'm sure, that got an F. There were some D minuses, but this, this was one of the worst. Just the age of the lock and the condition of the concrete and the amount of commodity that goes through it. It's, it you know, the, as much as it's used, that's what scored us high. Why do barges give the U.S. such a competitive advantage over all other countries? Because barges are hands down the most reliable, cost efficient, and environmentally friendly mode of transportation to and from export terminals. Barges can economically and sustainably move one ton of cargo 576 miles on just one gallon of fuel, while a truck can move one ton of cargo only 155 miles on one gallon of fuel. A typical 15 barge tow equals 216 rail cars or 1,050 large semis. The 110 million tons of material transported annually on Illinois waterways are equivalent to 4.4 million semi-trailer truckloads, or 1.5 million rail cars. There'll be eight to 10 guys on that tow moving it, uh, which if you did that with semis, you're talking about 870 truck drivers. And you're talking about emissions from every one of them engines. You're talking about the wear and tear to the roads. And you, you know, when a boat floats in the water, it don't wear nothing out. Shipping using inland waterways results in an average savings of more than $14 per ton over alternate overland modes. As a result, companies save more than $9.2 billion in transportation costs each year. With numbers like these, Craig Hess, chief of locks and dams for the Illinois waterways, sees LaGrange as a necessary investment. The improvements needed at LaGrange Lock and Dam are a major rehab, as we call it. Um, it has been slated for more than 10 years. Uh, currently, the major rehab that we have scheduled here would take about two years to complete, and the estimated cost is about $96 million. 
While a major investment, according to Michael Tarpey of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, it's a must for the companies that rely on the river to stay competitive here and abroad. The LaGrange Lock and Dam is the southernmost facility on the Illinois Waterway. In the year 2014, approximately 26 million tons of cargo passed through this facility with about a $10 billion value. About 60% of U.S. grain exports are transported via the Mississippi River and its tributaries, including the Illinois River. Any Illinois River disruptions considerably restrict the flow of grain from much of Illinois, the number two corn and soybean producing state to valuable export markets. If the lock was closed for 30 days, the estimated transportation costs, and you know, these are costs that people would have to pay in addition because of the loss of lock is estimated over $30 million. If the Mississippi and Illinois rivers were shut down in the vicinity of St. Louis, truck traffic would double, traffic delays would increase five-fold, and injuries and fatalities would increase from 36 to 45 percent on interstate highways. It's a scenario Bill Cross finds harder to avoid as the LaGrange lock ages. Two winters ago, we shut this lock down for less than 48 hours. We had 45 toes sitting here waiting, and that's not counting the barges. So you would have 450 men approximately on them toes and all that commodity. And you could possibly take $250,000 per hour times 46 to know the cost the impact to the shipping industry, that's, that's what makes them nervous. These boats back up quick when, when a lock breaks down. Craig Hess says the effects will be felt upstream as well. The cities north of here, and especially Chicago, uh, where would they get uh, their petroleum? Where would they get uh, their chemicals that all these manufacturers need? Uh, the cost and the delay of moving it to rail or to truck as an alternate form of transportation would, would greatly increase everyone's cost. Every consumer would pay for this lock being shut down. And according to Bill Cross, the economic impact goes beyond just shipping. If we couldn't hold water when we needed to, there's intakes to power plants. There's in city waters systems. Um, the farther north you get up a river, the more the impact there is. There's more cities and there's more cooling stations, you know. So uh, and I've seen studies on that, but this lock here would be, the, the biggest concern would be pump stations and power plants, cooling systems. For every $1 invested to improve navigation infrastructure, U.S. gross domestic product, or GDP, increases more than $3. With such a significant return on investment to the U.S. economy, you would think funding would keep pace. Yet, according to Hank DeHaan of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the funding for the improvements just isn't in their budget. Our O&M budgets have been flat for decades. So what that is resulting in is, for example, the Illinois Waterway is $600 million behind in unfunded backlog maintenance. What this does is it increases risk to the users of that system, and it also increases costs to the users of that system. With no consensus and very little support for funding, it has left Dahan and others in the industry evaluating other funding options. The viability of a public-private partnership is something we're exploring right now for the Illinois Waterway. So in order to assess that viability, we're looking at the costs of investment, and then we're looking at the enhanced benefits from that, the reduced risk. The benefits of a public-private partnership is that we have faster infrastructure delivery. We have cheaper costs because of efficient funding and then we have reduced risks associated with that infrastructure that's being improved. Whatever the solution, it's gonna take many in the public and private sectors working together. Addressing the infrastructure issues that we have today is a shared responsibility. We need to continue working with our stakeholders, our partners, our decision makers to better assess what the needs are out there and then how can we best get after those needs with a public-private partnership or the other tools that we have as well. For Bill Cross, the funding can't arrive fast enough. The reliability is questionable anymore, and that is extremely hard on our customer. The, the, you know, the, 
industry that transports your stuff up and down this river. We've got to get this thing reliable enough that they can go ahead with their business and count on us getting them through here when they have to be through here. And if we get all that done, this thing is going to be a well worth the money for many, many more years.